iPhone. Okay? Before or after? Stand up for before, sit down for after. And the answer is June 29, 2007. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, next one. Kelly Clarkson won the first season of American Idol. I'm just going to give you a hint. More than likely, you will all have the same answer. And the answer is? No. September 4, 2002. Does anybody here born in 2002? Me. You were? Me. I thought you were born in 2003. I'm going to be 18. I was born in 2002. I'm not good at math. Yes. Okay. All right, next one. Wikipedia was created. Wikipedia was created. What do you guys think? What do you think? I think it was after? Okay, answer. June, uh, January 15, 2001. 2001. There you go. There you go. All right, next one. Toy Story 2 hit the airs. Toy Story 2. Were you born before or after? Before or after? One. Or two, one. Do you feel like you are at an eye doctor? Or two, three, or four? Which one looks better? Three or four? Four. Which one's better? Four or five? No, okay, answer is <laughs> November 24th, 1999. You guys all stood up with someone Yep, yep. Story two here right before um, Y2K. Gotta love it. Okay, next one. SpongeBob SquarePants first TV episode premiered before or after you were born. Before or after you were born. Sit down for after. Stand up for before. The answer is yeah. You're all wrong. May first, 1999. Okay, you were born before. You were born before. All right. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm an idiot. You're. Okay, name the movie. The Grinch. Thank you. Okay, moving on. The Grinch. <laughs> Did it lock up? Okay, no, Sony no. released the PlayStation 2 video game console. Uh, PS2. Before or after? Sit down for after. Stand up for before. And the answer is March 4th, 2000. 2000. Okay, now it's. Julie, my sister, and I, uh, we like to play Crash Bandicoot Racing. We oh, yeah. Crash Team Racing. Oh, yeah, I love Crash Team Racing. It was lots of fun. All right, next one. No, next one's a tiebreaker, so they have to guess the... Huh? It's a tiebreaker. The, the breaker. Oh, this one's fun. I just want to see if you guys can guess the year, okay? Hint, it's in the between 2000 and 2010. So you're going to hold up the number of fingers... Okay, do you think it is? So if you think it's 2002, you're going to hold up two. Got it? Okay? All right. So, name the year Microsoft released the Xbox 360. 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. What do you guys think? What do you think? I see a lot of sevens. 2007s. I see that. Yeah. Answer. 2005. Joel got it right. Okay, for bonus points, because, you know, we're keeping score. No, we're not. Okay, what month and day? Couldn't tell you. Okay, who knows? Any guesses? March 1st. Any guess? What do you think? March 1st. March 1st? October 22nd. October 22nd. Think so? Okay. Christmas day. Hint, it's near a holiday. I'll give you that. It's near a holiday. Okay. He said, hint, it's near a holiday. <laughs> What? What? What did you say, Dylan? Wait, I, which one? What did you say? I said November 22nd or November 23rd. Well, pick one. Oh, that's right. It was right before Thanksgiving because they were trying to hit the whole Black Friday, so got That's what okay. I was thinking. That's the only time to Alright, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Let's have a word of prayer before we get started. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we get to be in this place. And God, I pray that as we spend time in worship tonight, God, it wouldn't just be music or songs. God, it would be our hearts um, combined together and declaring how great you are and what you mean to us, but also, God, proclaiming what we should be doing as followers of you, God. We thank you so much for your love. 
We thank you for the hope that it gives us. And God, we are so thankful that no matter what we face, you are greater than those things. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
trust that you've got our best interest in mind. I think that's the biggest thing we struggle with every day, is that uh, you got what best in mind is for us today, not us. And you know what's best for us, and we still want to do what we want to do every day. Every day we rest in that. So God, I, think, I, I just pray that our faith would rise up in each of us, grow stronger, and that we would let go of that and realize it's about you and it's not about us and realize that you've given us your love and your love to share with the rest of the world and the rest of the world needs it, especially right now, more than ever. So God, just speak to us tonight, help us to listen, help us to heed. And may peace be still in our hearts, God. And you say we love you and praise you. Doing? doing okay? It's good to see uh, you guys tonight. Uh, hopefully, um, it's okay. you're doing well. I, I hope you are. I know it's a weird time and we don't oftentimes get to uh, check in with each other like we normally do, but it's good to see your faces every now and then. Some of y'all haven't seen your faces in a while, but it's really good to see your faces. Um, so, um, I want you to hug your necks one day. Okay? There will come a day that I will hug every one of your necks. Um, tonight, we're going to continue our series called The Transition um, and look at, um, we're going to shift from um, Matthew, which is where we were last week, into one of Paul's letters in Romans. But we're going to be at Romans chapter 6 tonight. Um, but before we kind of dive in there and we're going to be in those first uh, 11 chapters, um, I wanted to kind of refresh you on what we're talking about when we're talking about the transition. It's very easy to kind of think of the transition as like this, oh, it's just that thing that Brad talked about, and he's got this cool graphic that he stole from somebody, and, um, and put it up there on the uh, on the um, Instagram. I didn't steal it. It was free rides, okay? I mean, like, it wasn't literal theft, okay? It was, I, I legally purchased it without paying. Um, okay? But no. Um, so sometimes uh, we just look at those things like, oh, that's cool, that's a graphic, and yay, it's got lines, and it's got black and white, it's transition, and all those different things. It's like, oh, that's neato, okay? But really what we want to kind of talk about is this idea that as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are transitioning from what we once were before Christ to who we should be in Christ. And sometimes... Um, that transition gets blurred by lots of outside sources. Maybe what's going on in the world, maybe what's going on in your relationships, maybe what's going on in your family, what may be going on in your own personal experience, or maybe just due to an unknowing of what that even looks like in your life. How many of you have ever felt like the very idea of who I'm supposed to be like in Christ, in my context, okay, as Kinden, as Ethan, as Jolie, as Abby, as whatever, your role is, okay, how many of you have ever struggled with trying to figure out what am I supposed to be like in Jesus? Ever been there? I mean, if we're honest, all of us have been there. You know, it's one thing that we, you know, maybe say a prayer or go to church or, um, you know, have a good Jesus experience or whatever, okay? I know this is a weird summer. We're not going to have, like, a whole camp hike, like, experience. So it's like um, 2020. It's not going to have a camp high. We're just going to be like this. We're going to be pandemic level. Okay? But, um, but like, it's kind of interesting to think about it. I, I was sitting around um, this week kind of working through all that stuff. And this is just a weird summer. I mean, tonight I was planning on being at Super Summer. And a lot of you who, who were going to Super Summer were going to be there with me. Some of you guys were going to be meeting us there that night. Um, I know even Abby was, like, planning on, like, you were going to be getting back from uh, a mission trip, Nicaragua, right? Is that right? Dominican. Dominican. Wow. Two totally different places. Um, but anyway, but like, you know, those kinds of things, some of the stuff we planned are not there. And so, um, 
in the midst of all that, I started thinking about the very idea of what we normally do um, in, as a youth ministry that you guys maybe never even realize, okay? Because you're just a part of it, and sometimes me as a youth pastor um, kind of just moseys into things. But we always have conversations, um, whether that's like um, me and Rusty or me and some of our adult sponsors or whoever, um, we'll have conversations about, okay, camp happened, that was awesome, or whatever, okay? Now how do we carry on the things that happen, the things that we were challenged by, the transition there? And really what I feel like is this whole summer is going to be kind of like, okay, the things that have happened over the last three months are cray cray, okay? Lots of different things going on. Obviously, none of you ever thought you'd live through a worldwide pandemic. This guy never did either, okay? Um, and, like, it's been totally different. So how do we then use that as an example of transitioning in our relationship with God? Because all of us now, three months later, after, you know, you know, I remember sitting here on a Wednesday night in mid-March, okay? And we got the news right after the Wednesday night service that the Thunder game got canceled because Rudy Gobert got tested positive for COVID. And it was like everything leading up to that moment was like, oh, wow, this is kind of real. But when that happened, it was like in Oklahoma City. I think for a lot of people, including myself, was like, oh, this is for real. Like, this really happened. And sometimes for us in our relationship with God, there are things that happen to us or the experiences we go through that are like reality checks for us. And what it looks like to follow Jesus through that moment um, is like, oh wow, that really caught my attention. But then we struggle with what do we do next? You ever been there? You ever have like, we often call it a camp high or a camp experience or something like that, that happens, an event or an experience or a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden you're just like, oh wow, it's like a light bulb moment. But then you're like lost about what do we do now? Like, where am I supposed to go there? You ever been there? I've been there, okay? What, what do we do now? And that's what I want to focus in on. We talked a little bit about that last week, but I really want to focus in on what Paul talks about here in this, what he calls a new life in Christ, okay? So that's where we're going with this. That's the transition. That's the idea that we're talking about here. So it'll be up on the screen, but we're going to start in Romans chapter 6, um, verse 1. You can follow in your Bibles or you can watch it up on the screen. Um, but he says, so what are we going to say? Should we continue sinning so grace will multiply? Absolutely not. All of us died to sin. How can we still live in it? Or don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried together with him through baptism into his death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too can walk in newness of life. If we were united together in a death like his, we will also be united together in a resurrection like his. This is what we know. The person that we used to be was crucified with him in order to get rid of the corpse that had been controlled by sin. That way, we wouldn't be slaves to sin anymore. Because a person who has died has been freed from sin's power. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died to sin once and for all with his death, but he lives for God with his life. In the same way, you also should consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. There's a lot in there, okay? Like I get most of Romans is that way. Like you could dissect every like three verses and you could spend an hour. Like there's guys that have written books that are like this thick about just like chapters of Romans. Um, and that kind of stuff. But like you could dissect a lot of things, but I really want to hit on about two big points, maybe a third if we have time. Okay? Can we deal with that? Okay. First one. He uses this example in the first few verses about baptism. And when I hear that, we all hear different things. Most of the time we think of being dunked in water or sprinkled by water or whatever you might think of from whatever your, your background is in that area. Okay? And in the midst of all that, oftentimes we think, okay, like for us here at Snow Hill, the way we do it, everybody's up in church, you got the pastor, he has said his little thing, da da da, don't shoot water, you come up, you're soaking wet, you go dry off, you go back to church, and there's this kind of back and forth and a big kind of deal, right? But in that, there are words that we say 
when we baptize somebody, or at least here at Snowfield, the words that we say, is that for you were buried with Christ, and then we sip you in the water, okay? That's not really what water sounds like when you go down. But anyway, it goes sploosh, okay, in the water, right? And then raised to walk in newness of life. That's really how, where this comes from is a lot from Romans chapter 6 right here. He's talking about you've been baptized in this way, okay? You've been put to death, these things, sin, death, everything else has been put to death, and now we're raised to walk in a new life, okay? Now, we always talk about how there ain't no magic in the water, but we really just like yank it out of the well. Nobody like sprinkles any holiness in there or anything like that. It's literally just water from the well of tunnel. It leaves crustiness on the bat baptistry and all that kind of stuff, all right? It's just water. So what is baptism in that? Baptism is a declaration of what I once was to now who I'm going to be, as well as the community that you're doing it with committing with you to help you become that new person, okay? We often miss that second part. We always focus on the first part. It's very about me. It's very personal. And we miss the communal side of it. So when we do it in front of people, what that is is not only are you saying to the group of people that I'm making this decision, but also that group of people saying to you, hey, we're going to help you with this decision, with this newness of life, and helping you put to death those things that no longer should control you, okay? And Paul uses that as an example. And I'm reminded of, you know, a lot of times we think of water, and we use the uh, uh, metaphor, or not metaphor, the image of being washed clean, okay? Like, obviously take baths, showers, things like that, wash you clean, go take baths or showers, please. Okay? If not, okay? But in the midst of that, we think of purification a lot of times. You know, you wash something clean, like in the dishes and stuff, um, whatever. Now we think about, like, taking baths and, like, germex or whatever because of everything in the world. Okay, so we don't want to get COVID, so we would take, no, nobody take a bath. Don't take a bath in germex. They don't be good. I saw Ethan earlier. He put little hand sanitizer on his hands. He had a cut in his hand. He was about to cry, I think. It <laughs> okay? Just burns. All right? But um, that's one example that, yes, baptism kind of means, but here's another one that I learned a, a while back that really meant something to me from a point of, like, oftentimes when you think, oh, okay, I'll wash that off, I'm done. Right? That's what we kind of think. I took a shower, I'm clean, whatever. Okay? Um, but this image that I, I heard was, um, it really challenged me in how I understand what it is to be buried and walk into you know, in, in Hebrew times, um, look, the creation story of water, um, they talk about waters below and waters above. I'm not going to get into the whole dome thing. Most of you have heard it a few times. Some of you are like, what are you talking about, Brad? But some of you have heard it way too many times. I'll shake your head in the back, I think. I thought you were going to get the whiteboard out and draw. Whiteboard and draw a picture and my terrible words. No. Okay, but like the way they viewed the earth at that time before they developed in like our understanding and science and all those kinds of things, they thought the earth was flat and that there was this dome, and there was water above, above the dome, and then there was water below. That was, um, you know, like ocean seas, that kind of stuff. They didn't think there was a bottom of the ocean. Um, we now know that it's like this, and there's like no air, and then there's air, and then there's land, and there's more water in the pockets of land, okay? And so, National Geographic, it's awesome. But, um, so like, in the midst of all that, the, the idea then is that water for them was unknown. There was no scuba diving or submarines and all that kind of stuff back then, right? So they couldn't stay underwater for very long. And if they went fishing or on boats or different things, storms would consume them. That's why the disciples were freaking out when the storm happened. Jesus, wake up, help us, we're all gonna die. That's basically what they were doing because to them, water in that sense was chaos. It was uncontrollable. It was consuming. And so to be in the midst of all that, the symbol that it's that um, someone explained to me with this of being dipped into water is you are dunking yourself, so to speak, or you are going down into chaos. Something that's uncontrollable. Sin in our life, death, uh, sorrow, suffering, those kinds of things that consume us, doubts about ourselves, doubts about the world, doubts about God, all those things. We're then putting those into chaos, the things that we live into that are not of God. And then being raised out of that chaos into Jesus, where that chaos is left behind. The chaos of sin and death is left behind. And you now have this newness of life. And I love that imagery because it's not something that just ends. If I'm being raised into newness, it doesn't mean that I was raised and now I'm good. 
It's I'm being raised into newness. In other words, there is a continuation, a transition. It's transitioning from the chaos of sin and death, the things that were once about my life, what I did hold value to, to now something else. And that's what Paul's talking about in here is there, there was once this life that you held value on that was not of God. Now, for some of us, that's hard to relate because maybe you made a commitment to follow Jesus at like, you know, two? Okay, probably not. But like, you were really, I was seven, okay? But I took several years for me to grasp a lot of things. I'm still trying to grasp a lot of things. That's why it's a continuation of understanding this new life because I still, at almost 35, have lots of things that I need to still be putting to death, that I need to be leaving in the water of chaos. Many of us do. We have lots of things in our heads. Things that we should be putting away, that we should be getting rid of. And the best way to do that is to rise out of the midst of news, to seek the things of God rather than the things that hold us back. And that's what Paul's talking about. And that's what baptism symbolizes in that is there was this once this thing that held on to us and no longer has to hold on to us. There's this newness that we should be about, this transition into being like Jesus. And then he kind of continues on. That's the first part, in case you were counting. Okay, that was only one. I knew you were like, I have some long point. Okay, but no. He then moves into um, this idea that of crucified with sin. So he moves from baptism to another imagery of crucifix crucifixion. Okay? Crucifixion. <laughs> okay, crucifixion. All right? And, and I mean, we've all probably seen the image of, like, maybe you've watched, you know, Passion of the Christ or different things. But most of us have seen, like, pretty crosses that hang on walls or wear around our necks and stuff, which is kind of hilarious. It's like, you know, I don't have anything against somebody wearing a cross around their neck or anything like that. But, like, it's kind of funny. It'd be like, if we did that in that day of Jesus, it'd be like today, you know, having an electric chair hanging around your neck. I mean, because it was a, a form of oppression and death. It's just kind of very interesting. And so, um, but we think it's pretty, it's a reminder and all that kind of stuff. And that's nothing again, it, because I think there are things that we should hold on to as reminders for those kind of things. But the cross was a dark thing. It was, it meant oppression by the Roman Empire. It meant death. It meant suffering. It meant just everything that was darkness and evil in that moment. And the very fact that Jesus went to the cross and left it all there is a reminder of what we are supposed to be doing in our own lives is crucifying those things that hold us back, those things that are in the water of chaos, the things that are of sin and death, that are of no hope, that, that have no um, value in the kingdom of God. And that's where grace comes in. And I love how he kind of talks about um, at the end here, verse 8, he says, but if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. Now, we oftentimes read that verse and we jump straight to heaven. Most Christians have over several years. But he doesn't say that in here. Okay? It just says, we know that Christ has been raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has a power over him. It's not like saying, what it means is, is that for us there is life to live. We don't have to be living in this world of darkness and sin and death. We now have light live it. There is a life that's given, a newness. There is something to look forward to. There is something to push after. It doesn't mean everything to be, you know, roses. Okay? And all folks, roses are a bad example except thorns. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like roses. But anyway, they're pretty, but they're perky. Um, but no, like, it's different things along, the, like, it's not going to be just hunky-dory awesomeness. Like, life will hit us. But in remembering of that, we know that it doesn't overcome us. Because God gives us new of life. There is something to live into, transition into once we put those things away. We can now live into the things we should be putting in and strive after. Okay? But I really want to hit home on that last idea. The very idea that if Jesus lived and died and put to death all those things with the cross, but then raised to live in this himself. That is the example for us to put to death and live into this new life. Transition into the way of Jesus. Transition into the kingdom of God. All of us have stuff that we hold on to. Okay? Maybe you hang on to self-doubt. I'm 
I'm not good enough, or I messed up here. Maybe you're hanging on to um, a relationship that's holding you down. Maybe you're holding on to something that somebody might say, say about you, think about you. Or maybe you're holding on to guilt for doing something that you know you shouldn't have been a part of. Whatever it might be, we all have different things that hold us back from that raising into newness. That we want to keep one hand in the water, so to speak, rather than just get out and keep walking. That is where we have to be reminded of God's grace. Because he says, very beginning says, so what are we going to say? Should we continue sinning so grace will multiply? That is a misunderstanding of grace. Grace is something that compels us to leave things behind. Grace is understanding that we don't have to hold on to those things. We don't have to hold on to the guilt of those things. We don't have to hold on to the pain of those things. But we can leave them behind and continue in a new life. It's not just like um, I'm going to take grace that God loves me and all that kind of stuff and just keep doing all that same stuff and keep holding on to those same things and keep trying to bear all that weight. Okay, I saw an illustration one time. Sometimes we have things on there. And there was an example. This guy was standing on a football field and, the, and the, his therapist was trying to get a point across to him and he, um, he had a lot of things of baggage and things that he wasn't, didn't feel like he was good enough or different things like that. So he said, I want you to tell me something that you're holding on to. So he just named off things. And every time the therapist... He was a football player, so the therapist gave him a, a, a weight plate, so like 45 pounds or 25 pounds and stuff. And he had hanging from his belt, so he was holding on to them. And then he said, now I want you to try and jog to the, um, the end zone on your own door. And he's trying to carry all that stuff and get, get to his goal, where he's supposed to be going. It's so hard, he's sweating, he can't do it, and whatever. And so he sat there, and he stood with the man. And he stands across from him, and he says... The way you get rid of those things is you tell them that they have no power over you. You just leave them behind. And you name them for what they are. That's what confession is. It's not about trying to tell everybody all the bad stuff you did. Confession is for you to realize, I don't need that anymore. I'm realizing, I'm naming it, that it doesn't have to have power over me. So God, here, here's that plate of weight. I'm going to give you self-doubt. I'm going to give you Laziness. I'm going to give you, you feel the book. Gossiping. My need for a good reputation amongst people that I don't need that reputation for. Talking bad about people. Whatever it is. And each time he would hand off that weight, and before you know it, it was just this light that he had. Everything just seemed weightless because it didn't have to be held down by those things anymore. That is the challenge here of transitioning from. Once more, it's what we're supposed to be. What do we need to leave behind in the water of chaos? What is holding us down? Okay? That's the challenge I have with that. What are those things? What is that that you need to leave behind? The best way to do that is to name them and then find the opposite and go do. If you're being lazy, the best way to do lazy, get rid of lazy, is to go do something, right? Okay? Ask a coach who wants you to work out or whatever, okay? Or if you're lazy and you don't want to, you know, practice your instrument, Brody, okay? Like, I'm tired. I don't want to practice. Well, then you do it. You practice it. That's how you overcome those kinds of things, right? If you have a self-doubt, you start telling yourself how much God values you. You start recognizing that value, what God says about you what versus what you're trying to say about yourself. You do those things. If you have hate in your heart, you start intentionally trying to love people, to be kind to people. If you have anger, you start trying to be gentle with people and patient with them. Put those things in. Go look at Colossians chapter 3 again. I'll tell you every time. That's a great one to look on, okay? But that is the challenge, okay? Leave it in the chaos of water and rise into something with you that is in the kingdom of God. Okay? That's my challenge. Question. is um, 
many of you already know this, some of you may not, maybe it didn't matter because you weren't planning on anyway, but um, we, due to the numbers low and different things like that, we decided to cancel camp next week. There's a lot of factors into it. It wasn't just COVID-19 stuff, even though we all obviously have to factor that kind of stuff in. But it was, it was also kind of thinking about there were several people that were going to be left out of why, of being able to go to camp for whatever reason whether that was sports or everything, is a whole different schedule. And so when I looked at it and we were going to have less people going to camp than what we normally have on a Wednesday night, that didn't seem fair for everybody who couldn't go. So why would we go and do that? So let's do something that we can include to everybody, that can, that as many people can participate as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the same resources. We've got lots of food. I mean, we've got racks of ribs. We've got meatball subs. We've got tacos, hamburgers. So and everything in between it feels like. And Lorraine's ready to cook it up and get us hooked up, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do for the summer some different events that I'm calling Summer Remix, okay? Because this summer is holy mix. Let's just be honest, it's totally different, right? So we're gonna have some different things. So like one night, we're gonna have volleyball and it's gonna be like a volleyball tournament. Bring your friends, invite anybody. We can have all kinds of food to hand out. So I know there's a group that likes to play volleyball back there a lot. Home to come, make a team. Okay, we're gonna have a bracket. We'll do the whole tournament, and have a good time. I may or may not have a prize for the winning team. You just never know. Okay, but we'll do that. So we might like one night we might do volleyball and ribs. Okay, or something like that. We'll have other games if you want to play and that kind of stuff. Then we're also gonna probably have a cornhole tonight. We'll have a bunch of different stuff and ping pong and stuff like that. Um, we may just have a you know you know hang out kind of night, different things. We may do uh, whatever. Okay. Huh? Yeah, we'll pick. Yeah, yeah, ping pong guys. Okay, uh, uh, different things like that. So we're gonna look at that. But what I need from you guys to help me out is so that we can try. I want to make sure that as many people can be a part of the camp. So if we were to pick, like, this is the best night for me to do it. Okay, I'm gonna give you from what I've asked some parents and things like that. Obviously, Wednesday night is not the night because we're gonna continue. I know some of y'all have like crazy schedules because sports stuff is like taking over your life. I, I get that, okay? Um, and I'm gonna do my very best to try and do that. And if we gotta do certain things where we like change it up, one event is gonna be on one night of the week and then the next one we'll do it on a different night of the week, that's fine. So here are some options, okay? You guys tell me whether it's yay, nay, or whatever. Monday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Any of those five. Okay? So, um, number one option just seems to be, like, in the past, but I know that it's not the case because a lot of y'all have weekend stuff, is a Sunday night thing. It's, how many of you, like, Sunday night, forget about it? There ain't no way I'm going to make a Sunday night. Okay. That you, there's no way. Ben has to work. Tell them to just not schedule it. Or you have to wait to Monday, though. What time do you work on Sunday? We'll just go to Sonic and visit and, and get some drinks. I get pissed. Just tell them you forgot. Don't do that. Those are the things you leave down in the chaos of water. Or okay? You just call right. in sick. Okay. And I have a doctor's note. Okay. Uh, what? Yeah, they have all people calling it sick, like fake sickness. Oh, you, yeah, yeah like you told me. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, what about Saturday night? Also, Who couldn't do a Saturday night?
But anyway, okay, well, I'll look at that and I'll talk to you. If you need to get scheduled, I can call my boss. I need to get paid off. All right, so here's the other thing. I know also, not like, we won't do it this Sunday because it's Father's Day. That's my day. No I'm kidding. Yeah, but <laughs> this is like one of the few years I'm actually home on Father's Day. Okay, normally I'm in Super Summer, like all the time. Um, so I'm gonna enjoy it. But no, uh, the uh, next Sunday night, the 28th. I know for a lot of people um, that like it's the beginning of Dead Week for a lot of sports stuff, and so some of y'all are going out of town on vacation and things like that. So I don't want to exclude anybody that's gonna be going on there. So what if we looked at maybe like I mean, this pushes it back, but it's not like you got, it, it, we got the whole summer, so like, you know, that kind of stuff. Maybe like, do one on the 12th, because the other one's the 5th, that's the 4th of July, and I know that, like, it's not going to happen. Okay, it's only June. Uh, almost June. Okay, I'll look at it. I'll, I'll send it out there, I'll talk to you guys, but that's what we did. But that's what we're going to do, we're going to do some fun stuff. That's the goal. Okay, we're going to, I've got a bunch of stuff to fix up the pause on fit and different things like that. Second thing, okay, um, we won't have Bible study or Sunday night stuff this Sunday because of Father's Day. We'll still have church at 10 15. Um, it will also be live streamed and things like that. We'll do youth next Wednesday, just like this, okay? Um, but because we didn't do camp, and I already ordered camp shirts, and I did not make them because I was worried we were going to have to cancel camp. I did not make them camp specific. They just say, well, Autumn's got them back there. She can hold one up for you. Um, Oh, oh yeah, that's fine. I'll get them. So like, they basically are like a Phoenix. purple speck, but they have Snow Hill Youth on the corner, and on the back it's got 20, but inside it's 2020. So it's just generic, okay? Uh, we have them. It's going to be first come, first serve, but they're ten dollars a piece, and we got different sizes and things like that. If we run out of something, I can always eventually do a second order, okay? Um, by request and so like that. We have that, okay? But you can buy them tonight. If you got ten bucks on you, you want to buy them tonight? They're back there. Okay. Uh, just go see Autumn and my mama. We do not have change. We don't have so change. So if you only have a twenty, find somebody for ten. <laughs> okay. Uh, or no, no ten card. No cash. Um, no, or sorry, no, no, no. No, we're old school. Okay. All right. 